guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about Organization 101 and specifically the four B's of being organized. To me, being organized is all about just making my life easier. It's about doing things faster, having more free time and not having to panic when people are coming over because the house is a total mess. So I'm gonna share with you my strategies for getting everything really clean and organized really quickly. The first B is your bedroom. And I know this may sound counterintuitive because guests don't actually see your bedroom, but you do. It's the first thing you see when you open your eyes in the morning and the last thing you see when you go to bed at night. So it has to be a priority for you. It should be a relaxing oasis. It doesn't matter if the rest of the house is a total dump, you deserve a relaxing, clean and organized bedroom. This is where I started on my journey from super slob to clean freak was in the bedroom. I started in the closet and clearing off the top of the dresser, making my bed every day. The rest of the house can be a disaster, but your bedroom should be your top priority. The second B for being organized, well, it's baskets and bins. It's all about the baskets and bins. It's literally the secret to containing your clutter. And if you're a visual organizer, obviously opt for clear see-through bins or use a label so you know exactly what's inside. But baskets are a must. They contain all of the things that otherwise would spread out. They contain your makeup in your bathroom. They contain the dog toys on the floor. They contain things that otherwise would be on your kitchen counter. And it is an absolute must to have everything have a dedicated home in order to be organized. The next B is all about balance. I'm totally stretching here, but what I mean by this is distracting yourself from the crappiness of decluttering and organizing your home. For me, I just wouldn't be able to organize and clean without some sort of distraction. So I love exciting audiobooks. But maybe for you, your balance would be 15 minutes of organizing and then an hour of watching your favorite show. Or every time you purge 10 things from your closet, treat yourself to one new thing. It's all about making it less of a chore and way more enjoyable. It's about having balance when it comes to organization. Distract yourself, listen to a podcast or some awesome music, whatever it takes, balance is the key to motivation. The last B is totally the most important part of having a clean and organized home, and that is your bedtime routine. I don't care how tired you are or what you have to get done, you cannot go to bed until you do a quick 10 minute tidy every single night. Pick up those random things your kids have left lying out or the dishes you forgot to put in the dishwasher or wash. It's really important that you take the time every single day to pick up after yourself and to tidy your home. This is gonna give you a fresh start for the next day, but it's also going to make sure that you are starting a new habit and never getting overwhelmed by your clutter. I'm gonna put a link down below to my favorite bedtime routine so you guys can take a look at it. And if you haven't done this, put an alarm in your phone every day at eight o'clock and force yourself to do it. Put on those big girl pants. A bedtime routine is definitely key. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more organizing, decorating, and DIY videos each and every week. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, so thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Usually I'm the one who has like an overly dramatic bad day, but yesterday it was Joe. And I find this super hilarious because He's always the one that like nothing crappy ever happens to. He's just happy, go lucky, and then happiness rains down on him. But yesterday he was a dark cloud when he came home from work. And I was like, what's wrong, dude? Like you're always so, life is awesome. He's like, I've had the worst day. He has a Hyundai. His car is a piece of crap but it's like a fancy piece of crap. But anyways, it's always breaking. Every month it's breaking something. The, the windshield wipers wouldn't turn on. And the moonroof was like whistling. It was a really loud thing while he drove. And so it's under warranty and he keeps having to go back and get it fixed. And yesterday he was slightly adjusting his seat and the whole back fell back. And he was, a, it was broken. It was like laying flat. And he had to drive all the way to the dealership without the seat. And so he was stressed, but when he got home, our 85 year old neighbor 
basically stole all of Joe's stone. And you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. We're getting a hot tub. So we ripped up a patio so we could pour concrete in the backyard. And we have all these like patio stones, but Joe is going to relocate them to another area in our, of our house, of our backyard. And our neighbor saw us stacking them and he asked if he could have some. And Joe was like, totally, you can have some when I'm done using them. I'm gonna, he showed him in the backyard all the areas that he was gonna do. And he said he could have the leftovers, but when Joe got home from work last night, our poor 85 year old neighbor had already dug and installed almost all the bricks. It was like 160 two by two, those things are freaking heavy. And that old dude, man, he dug it and he laid it all nice in his backyard and now we don't have enough and we have to go buy. And Joe's like me, he hates confrontation. What do you do? Do you go to the super old dude and demand your stones back? Probably not, but poor Joe, he's having a rough day. So apparently it isn't just me. This whole family, everyone I assume in the world sometimes has a bad day. I, on the other hand, had a super fab day yesterday. Maybe we take turns. I'll see you next time.